My name is Sophia, and I am a 28-year-old woman. Recently, I have been facing complex issues within my family. My parents got divorced when I was 10, and the experience was anything but positive. After the divorce, my mother left the house, and I lived with my father for several years. It was just the two of us. We had a close relationship, and I thought we could talk about anything. However, as I grew older, many facts that my father had hidden from me since my childhood came to light. My father introduced me to a woman named Amanda, who is 50 years old. He had been dating her for some time, but had not told me anything about it. I was hurt by this secret, but I decided to support my father. A few months later, my father and Amanda got married, and Amanda's 25-year-old daughter, Angelica, also moved in with us. This changed my life completely. Suddenly, I had a stepsister. Angelica is very active and sociable, but I am more introverted. We were polite to each other, but never became close. When I left home at 18 to go to college, I was relieved to distance myself from the new family structure. After graduating from college, I focused on my studies and met many new friends. Eventually, I got a job in the town where I had attended university and decided to settle there. I visit my father and Amanda occasionally on holidays, but our interactions are limited to those visits. Angelica and I only interact when I stay in town for family dinners or exchange birthday gifts. As time passed, Angelica recently moved to my city with her husband, John, who is 27, and their children, four-year-old Liam and two-year-old Ava. John got a new job in a technology-related startup, so they moved here. In this area, Angelica does not work and stays home as a full-time housewife. When they first moved here, my father contacted me and asked me to help them settle into their new life. I was not keen on the idea but agreed. I showed them around the city, helped them choose a place to live, and assisted with their move. I thought that was the end of it, but it was not. About a week after they moved, Angelica started coming to my apartment every evening with the children, asking me to watch them while she went out. At first, I agreed to maintain a good relationship, but it soon became a routine. I work from home as a graphic designer, and she usually visits after my work hours, but I used to spend that evening time on personal projects or socializing with friends. I am not particularly fond of children and always feel tense when spending time with them. I have repeatedly suggested that Angelica hire a babysitter, but she always makes excuses. Just this once she insists. I'm still not familiar with this new city, she says. Last Friday, I began to feel used by her. I had plans with a friend to celebrate a close friend's promotion, which I had been looking forward to for a long time. That morning, I told Angelica that I could not watch the children that evening. She said, Okay, and I thought that was the end of it. Relieved, I finished work, and it was 6 p.m. Just before I was about to leave, Angelica showed up at my house with Liam and Ava, handed them over to me without saying anything, and hurried off in her car. I tried to contact her, but she did not respond. I also tried to reach John, but he did not respond either. In the end, I had to cancel my plans and stay home with the children. I was very upset. Angelica had ruined my plans before, but this was the first time she completely ignored my refusal to babysit. I was stuck with the children until 9 p.m. When Angelica came to pick them up, I confronted her about her behavior, but she dismissed it as an emergency and insisted it was not a big deal. She avoided giving clear answers to my questions. I strongly advised her to hire a reliable babysitter to avoid such situations in the future. Angelica exploded in anger, accused me of being selfish, and argued that families should support each other. At that moment, I was furious and told her that we were not a real family. Despite the lack of interaction before she moved here, she was acting as if we were real sisters because of our parents' marriage. I told her clearly that I did not intend to babysit anymore and asked her not to bring the children over unless called. Angelica left in tears. I was upset, but relieved to have set clear boundaries. Just when I thought everything was over, 
I received a call from my father the next day. He was angry and told me that Angelica had contacted him, crying and complaining that I had been mean to the children. He said, you have a duty to continue looking after Angelica's children. You should apologize to her. This is your responsibility as a family, he added. I tried to express my viewpoint, but he would not listen. I told him how I had been used repeatedly by Angelica, how my plans had been ruined, and how my time and privacy were not respected, but he just repeated that I should be more flexible and cooperative. Then, he said something that hurt me deeply. He accused me of being selfish and expressed his disappointment that I had become that way. He emphasized that Amanda and Angelica have become part of my family and insisted that I should accept that. He also pointed out how much I had distanced myself from them since his marriage to Amanda, speaking as if I still held a grudge. I was shocked by his words and argued that they were his family, not mine. As an independent adult, I have my own life and responsibilities, and I cannot spend my time just being Angelica's babysitter. The discussion escalated into a heated argument, and my father threatened to end our relationship if I did not apologize to Angelica and resume babysitting. I was deeply hurt and angered by this. I asserted that I am independent and do not need financial support from my father. Moreover, if he truly chooses to cut ties with me, it just shows that we were not as close as I thought. After ending the call with my father, I received messages from Amanda and other relatives. They criticized me for being unfair to Angelica and argued that I should show more understanding towards a young mother struggling in a new city. I also received accusatory calls from some aunts about the deteriorating family relations. Although there was no direct contact from Angelica herself, she posted on social media that families should support each other quoting words that define family not just by blood or sisterly relationships. Her actions seemed clearly aimed at making me feel guilty. I am confused about whether I am in the wrong. I believe it is unfair for Angelica to expect me to babysit for free at any time, and I feel that the threats from my father are unjustified. However, I have doubts about whether I have been too harsh on Angelica. Amanda is not truly my family. I am tormented by guilt and wonder if I should have been more tolerant towards Angelica. Maybe I should have made more effort to deepen our relationship when we were younger. Still, I harbor anger and resentment, feeling that my opinions and boundaries are not respected. After my parents' divorce, I emphasized freedom and learned to rely on myself. I studied hard in school, earned scholarships in college, and built a career to ensure success. I am not accustomed to coexistence, and honestly, I do not want to feel responsible for being relied upon. Yet, I genuinely care about Liam and Ava, and I cannot remain indifferent to this situation where they bear no responsibility. I do not want the children to feel rejected, but having a family member who does not want to babysit is not in their best interest. I have discussed this issue with friends, and opinions vary some think I am too harsh, while others suggest I should build a better relationship with Angelica. I believe in setting boundaries and Angelica has the right to them. Uncertain about how to proceed, I am torn between apologizing and standing my ground. This situation has become overwhelming and I cannot find a solution. I hope not to sever ties with my father, but I also do not want to be exploited. Through this situation, I am questioning many things about family and myself. Am I truly selfish as my father suggests, and perhaps I still harbor unresolved feelings about his remarriage? Maybe I should have built a closer relationship, and I continue to contemplate how to handle my long-term relationship with Angelica and what it would have been like if my mother were here. Since the divorce, contact with my mother has been sporadic as she lives a nomadic life within the country. I can only guess what she might think about this. I feel overwhelmed. Two weeks have passed, and the situation has only become more complex. I have made the decision to stand my ground. I have not apologized to Angelica nor resumed babysitting duties. As a result, tensions within the family have escalated. Communication with my father has completely ceased, 
and Angelica continues to post sarcastic messages about our family's false values and the significance of nieces and nephews on social media. Previously, I used to talk to my father at least once a week, but at that time we have no contact. I reassure myself that this is the best course of action and that I am setting appropriate boundaries, yet my heart still aches. My stepmother, Amanda, has tried several times to mediate and bring about reconciliation between Angelica, my father, and me, saying she understands my position. She says that families often need compromises, but I feel my feelings are being dismissed. I am focusing on my work and taking on additional tasks. To forget about the family issues, I have also started freelancing projects. I have increased my visits to the gym and started a new hobby of painting. Engaging in creative activities amidst the busyness provides me some solace. Last week, an unexpected event occurred that changed everything. While working at a local cafe, I heard a familiar voice. It was John. He was sitting at a table with an unfamiliar woman. At first, I thought she was a work colleague, but then I realized that was not the case. He was holding her hand across the table. They were talking quietly, looking at each other, suggesting that their relationship was not a good one. Shocked, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I couldn't imagine John being intimately involved with another woman during work hours. Confused and unsure what to do, I debated whether to confront him or take a picture as evidence, but in the end, I left the cafe without taking any action. When I got home, the scene one had just witnessed replayed in my mind. I avoided confronting John. I debated whether to tell Angelica about this fact, but I wasn't sure she would believe me. Our relationship was already shaky, and accusing her husband of infidelity could have worsened the situation. I pondered this issue all day and into the evening of the next day. Then I received a call from Angelica, but I almost didn't answer, thinking it was another babysitting request. However, something made me pick up the phone. Angelica was crying and asked to visit my house. Considering her reason might be related to John, I agreed to her request. She looked extremely worn out, with swollen eyes and a look of not having slept for a long time. But this was not because of John. Angelica confessed that she had lied about having important errands when she left her children with me, and she revealed that she was undergoing treatment for postpartum depression and anxiety disorder. Since the birth of Ava, she had been struggling constantly, and she cried as she talked. She felt inadequate as a mother and had not told her family anything because of her fear of being judged. During therapy, she had left her children with me, which shocked me. I felt a mix of sympathy for Angelica, anger at her deceit and use of me, and regret for having judged her harshly. I told her that I understand the difficult situation she is facing, but I cannot accept her lying and leaving her children with me without planning. We talked for a long time. Angelica apologized for not disclosing her actions sooner and promised to look for a reliable babysitter. I expressed that I cannot regularly babysit, but I am willing to help if notified in advance. As we talked more, I began to see Angelica from a completely different perspective. Even though she seems successful on the surface, I realize that she struggles just as much as anyone else. This made me painfully aware of how little I understood her life and how quickly I had judged her. Angelica also spoke about the loneliness she felt after moving to a new city, and she was happy that we could become closer. After that, we both feel that we can truly be together. A sisterly bond, unlike anything we had experienced before, has blossomed between us. She apologized for being too forceful and for not respecting my boundaries. I also shared my feelings with her, talking about the alienation I felt after my father's remarriage and the difficulties I faced adjusting to the new family. We exchanged stories from our childhoods and shared memories and perspectives we had never discussed before. We were in the middle of repairing our relationship. I debated whether to tell Angelica about John's actions, and ultimately I chose to tell her the truth. I carefully explained the incident at the cafe. Angelica's reaction was not what I expected. She did not react with surprise or anger, but began speaking calmly. 
I already knew about what John was doing. It turned out that the woman John was secretly meeting was actually his half-sister. John was adopted as a child and had only recently found his biological family. He had not been ready to tell Angelica or anyone else in the family as he was meeting his half-sister secretly. He was worried about how this fact would affect his adoptive parents and other family relationships. While I was relieved that John was not having an affair, I felt uncomfortable that he had deceived the family. I pointed out to Angelica that if everyone had been honest from the start, this situation could have been avoided. Angelica agreed and said she would discuss with John the need for more openness in the family. She also promised that our relationship would be more open in the future. We ended the day feeling lighter. The next day, I contacted my father and shared how Angelica and I had resolved our issues. I intend to continue my relationship with Angelica and will look after the children as needed, but I also made it clear that my limits must be respected. Surprisingly, my father understood, apologized for his previous reactions, and acknowledged that he had been putting pressure on me. We vowed to improve our communication and respect each other's boundaries. We also discussed the past. We had a difficult conversation about how his remarriage affected me and how we had drifted apart over time. It seemed like we were finally addressing a topic we had avoided for years. Although it appeared that the situation was heading towards resolution, I still felt tense. Our family still harbors many secrets and unspoken anxieties. While I am glad that I could sort things out with Angelica, I feel that there is still something unresolved. A month has passed, and the situation has not improved. My concerns were confirmed. Last week, Angelica called me in a hurry. She was crying so hard that her words were almost inaudible. After calming her down, she shared a terrifying piece of news. John was not just meeting his half-sister he was having an affair with her. Angelica had suspected that John was repeatedly meeting someone, so she followed him. One day, she found him meeting a woman not at the usual coffee shop but at a hotel. She confronted John, and he confessed. John claimed he felt a new connection with his half-sister and attempted to justify his actions, but Angelica was shocked and deeply hurt. I was shocked. I regretted not taking more proactive action when I saw John with the woman. I tried to comfort Angelica over the phone, but she was distraught and decided to leave John. Despite our past disagreements, she asked if she and the children could stay at my house during this difficult time. I could not leave her alone in her time of need. I agreed for the children to stay. The next day, Angelica and the children moved into my house. It was a very challenging move. My home is not designed for small children. Angelica and the children are emotional, crying and bursting out in anger. I try to support them, but it only adds to my suffering and makes the situation worse. John has repeatedly contacted Angelica and has visited my home multiple times, further complicating the situation. I had to threaten to call the police to drive him away. Everyone is suffering, including the children who do not understand what is happening. My father contacted me with a worried tone, saying he had important news and wanted to meet. I was deeply shaken by the shocking fact my father revealed. It turned out that John's half-sister is also my half-sister. My father confessed that he had a brief romantic relationship with John's biological mother long before he met my stepmother. That woman had a daughter, and John had an affair with her. I was stunned to learn that my father had kept this secret for years. 30 years ago, a DNA test done by John's half-sister matched several members of our family, and that was when my father first learned of the fact. He contacted her and learned the full story. I felt like my worldview had been turned upside down. I was shocked that everything I had believed about my family was a lie and felt anger toward my father for keeping such a secret. My disappointment in John's betrayal mixed with frustration at myself for not realizing it sooner. I have not yet told Angelica about this latest revelation, as she is already dealing with so much, and I am worried about how it will affect her and my own life. She is near her breaking point. 
but I know I will have to tell her eventually. Lately, I have been feeling mentally disoriented. I am trying to support Angelica while also coming to terms with the emotions stirred by the discovery of my new sister. I have taken time off work to deal with these issues, but I am unsure how much longer I can endure. I am considering therapy to help solve all these problems and trying to spend my days as calmly as possible. I reached out to a few friends for support, but it was difficult to explain that my brother-in-law was having an affair with his hidden half-sister. How do you even begin to explain something like that? It feels like an over-the-top drama. With so many things to consider Angelica, the children, John's custody issues, and my half-sister I was overwhelmed and unable to cope with everything. Still, I am doing my best to provide Angelica and the children with a stable environment, despite my own turmoil. I have also tried to take care of myself. I have been keeping a journal to sort through my emotions and engaging in activities I enjoy. Three months have passed. Much has changed. I eventually told Angelica that John's mistress is our half-sister. She was devastated once again, but it was the closure she needed. She filed for divorce and obtained a restraining order against John. The legal process has been complex, but Angelica has handled it with grace. Angelica and the children stayed with me for about a month, but then she found her own small apartment and started working part-time at a local bookstore. She is slowly finding her own way to live her new life. This experience has brought us closer than ever. I occasionally babysit Angelica's children, but only under the conditions I set, and Angelica respects my boundaries. We have not yet reached out to our half-sister, and it's unclear when or if we will be ready. Her existence, along with John's actions, makes it difficult to establish a relationship with her. I still feel tension with my father and harbor anger toward him. We have had several difficult conversations about the important secret he kept hidden for so long. These talks have challenged trust, honesty, and the impact of his decisions. My father has been seeing a therapist to confront his shame and figure out how to rebuild trust with the family. Progress is slow, but we are moving forward. I am also in therapy, which has helped me process my emotions and set healthy boundaries. I am learning the importance of prioritizing my mental health. Amidst this crisis, I reconnected with my mother, reaching out to her after everything was revealed. I needed to talk to someone who wasn't personally involved. We had a heartfelt conversation. My mother has been a constant source of emotional support. We are working on rebuilding our relationship, and I am truly happy to have her back in my life. Then, I decided to take a break from everything. I needed some time away from the family conflicts and to embark on a journey of self-discovery. I spent a month in Hawaii. The experience broadened my perspective. While I care about my family, they are not everything. The people who truly matter are the ones who respect your boundaries and do not force you to sacrifice your ideals or happiness. I cannot predict the future of my family. Rebuilding trust will take time. For now, I am focused on my healing and personal growth. I am reevaluating what family means to me and surrounding myself with people who bring joy into my life. I keep in regular contact with Angelica and she is focused on her children and her new job, regaining her health. She is progressing through her divorce with surprising strength. We are planning a trip with the kids next summer, something to look forward to. As far as I know, John has left town. His affair with his half-sister ended badly, and he tried to reconcile with his adoptive family, but I don't know the details and, honestly, I'm not interested. However, I am gradually repairing my relationship with my father. We continue to have conversations once a week. Although things are not completely back to normal, the situation is improving. My father is making an effort to be more transparent and honest, not just with me but with the entire family. Through this experience, we have deeply learned about resilience, forgiveness, and the importance of sincerity. Moreover, we have come to understand that it's never too late to build relationships, 